Hi folks, this is Mrs. Carlson and I'm here to walk you through one of my online courses. In this case it's going to be biology, but it, this works for pretty much all of my online courses. So I wanted to walk you through first of all that there are three links. The 03051 is my course number, don't worry about that. But you have three menu links, home, modules, and grades, and I'll get to each one of those as we go along. So the home page is what you're going to see each time you log into my class. And you can see it's got a little welcome here, how to contact me. Um, and then it walks you through several parts. So here's the syllabus. That's the first one. And always just go in order. It says one, two, three, four, five. So we go to the course syllabus and you can see it opens up in a second tab. And that'll show you the syllabus for the course. So we'll close that, make sure you've read it, and then go through the class policies. Now these class policies have recently been updated, so make sure that if you're a returning student that you have looked through them um, each semester. So the first thing is on late work. Uh, make sure that you understand that all work turned in after the due date will be assessed a 20% late penalty. This is consistent across all of the high school courses. Attendance expectations, and that's new this year, and so just so that you understand that all students are expected to put in five hours per course per week because that averages out to one hour per day. Now some classes may take you a little bit longer on certain weeks and some may take you a little bit shorter, but pretty much they average out to about five hours a week of concentrated time. Not doodle time, but concentrated work time. And then finally, there's the academic honesty policy. And make sure that you have read through this very, very carefully and understand that the consequences for academic dishonesty and what constitutes plagiarism, as well as the steps that we will follow um, with each incident of plagiarism. So, you know, in order to prevent any kind of uh, issues with that, we have a link at the bottom that helps you to avoid plagiarism there. Third, you're going to watch the orientation video, which is what you're watching right now. And then fourth, answer questions. This will be a link uh, so that you can answer those questions. Um, and then finally, you're going to look at the study guide. Now, I highly recommend that you print out the study guide and fill it in as you go through. You know, definitely keep a notebook for each course and fill in these things as you're going through the course. This goes generally in the order in which I'm going to cover topics starting with scientific investigation, as you can see here. So make sure that you've gone through each one and fill it in as you go along. Make it a working document, because that way you're more prepared for that semester exam as you go along. Finally, you're going to fill out the academic honesty contract. And um, I need to get permission on that. So apparently it's missing at the at this point, but I will get it relinked. But make sure that you fill out the academic honesty contract before moving on. And then make sure that you understand that the modules have their own pacing guide. Make sure that you print it out and check things off as you complete them because those pacing guides will help you not get behind. It'll also help you in courses to not compress everything at the end of the unit when the due date is happening. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. Number one, if you turn things in early, and let's say you made a mistake, if it's before the end of the unit, I'll tell you, and you can resubmit it. That will give you the opportunity to increase your grade. But if you're turning it in at the end of the unit, and I don't grade it, let's say you turn it in on Friday, and I don't grade it till the following Monday, uh, when we're starting another unit, because I'm not going to grade it on the weekends, so let's say you did that. Um, that means that when I grade it and you've made a mistake, you're no longer going to get that A ever because once I've said, hey, you can still resubmit it and you can within that following week. But when you do that, you're getting penalized with that late penalty. So you want to avoid that. So you want to turn stuff in early and as you go. Pace yourself each day. And that way it avoids any kind of mishaps and mistakes. It helps you to raise your grades so that you can uh, make sure that you're on top of things. And finally, just plain and simply, if you're not touching material each day, 
um, mentally you forget it because it goes into your short-term memory and you lose about 90% of what goes into short-term memory. It doesn't stay with you, which is why it's called short-term. Okay, so that's my little soapbox. So let me walk you through what modules are. This is the modules view for students. And you can see that this is that, um, that beginning, the academic honesty contract you can see here. You can access all of your quizzes and tests and checklists and things each time from this modules page. You don't have to go anywhere else other than grades. So let's see, you've gone through the Hi All and Welcome to Biology. That's the front, front page, so we'll go back. This is where course announcements are going to be held. Now I'm going to make sure that you are all subscribed to it, but if for some reason you don't get subscribed, you can just click on this little button over here that says subscribe. Make sure that you have done so in each one of your classes, because if there's something going on that I need to alert you guys immediately, I'm going to put it in that course announcements for you. Here's the academic honesty contract that's also linked off the front page, and you need to complete that before you move on. Additionally, in this hi all and welcome is going to be that quiz on this orientation video. Okay, so let's take a look at Unit 1, and that's really the only one we're going to look at. So Unit 1, make sure you go in these in order. The only one that you're going to go out of order is the discussion board. I do recommend that you put your initial thoughts the first thing um, on the discussion board. Put that initial thread on there. But after that, make sure that you're returning so that you can respond to other students in your class. The difference between a student getting an A in a class and the student getting a B in a class is very often their participation in discussion boards. They engage with the content a little bit better if they're participating regularly. But let's take a look at this in order. So here's the introduction, and this is just kind of an overview of what we're going to cover. Now I want you to point, I want to point out that this says the next button down here. So once you've clicked on that first page, you can go through just by hitting next. So we're going to take a look here. And then here's the checklist. It's going to take a little bit to populate because my internet is slow, so bear with me while that populates. Okay, so here's the checklist. Now you can either click directly into the checklist, or you can just print it right here. So that's rather handy, I thought. So make sure, again, that you're printing it out, and you can see that I've got recommended dates for you to complete things, so that things don't get piled up on you. And then the final due date is the, is the unit due date. So in this case, I don't have a next button, so I'm going to go up here to this breadcrumbs trail and go back to my unit one. And then this is a readings link. You actually don't need this, but if you do want to print it out for whatever reason, you're a book person or whatever, you can do that from this link here. So let's go into this discussion board. So in this case, here's your instructions. Welcome to the class. We're going to be together for a while, so let's get comfy with one another. So here's what you need to do. One, introduce yourself with your first and last name and a nickname if you prefer one. Two, tell us a little bit about your interests. Three, tell us one thing you've wondered about in, that relates to biology. And then after you, your initial post, you need to respond to other students in the class. Stay positive, say something interesting in the conversation, and ask something that would be nice to know in order to earn full credit. That's called the PID method. You will not get full credit if you don't follow all three parts of that. Also, make sure that you edit for grammar and spelling, because that is super, super important. So what you can do is when you get in there, you hit reply. And that reply will allow you to start typing. Once you've posted your replies, you can start to see everybody else's stuff. You will not be able to see their stuff until you've replied yourself. Um, and I do that on purpose so that you're not just sitting there tweaking it to specifically to other people's 
ideas. Okay, so here I'm going to go to the next button, which you can't see on your screen, and then we go into our first lesson. So you can see here, it says U1, this is our title for the lesson, and then I've got steps, one, two, three, four, and five. This is the whole lesson right here on one page. So it says read pages one through seven of the reading section. Be sure to click all links on those pages as you read and take notes. So when we click on that link, it takes us out to the PDF for that uh, lesson. And so we read through pages one through seven. Make sure that you're clicking links. Make sure that you're taking notes. And then we'll go to step two. And then step two, we watch a video. And you know, these are important. They're not ones you should skip. You should definitely be taking notes. If I'm sticking a video in there, trust me, there's gonna be stuff that's gonna be asked or could be asked on those. And then there's a lecture that I've done on scientific me method and biology. So you're gonna take notes read pages 8 through 12 of the same reading section, and then take your reading quiz. And you can click on the reading quiz here, or you can just hit the next button. And it asks you to take the quiz. So that's pretty much the modules. It'll allow you to go pretty much straight forward, straight through. And you can see in this particular unit, there's three lessons, which means there's a reading quiz after every lesson. All reading quizzes are 25 points, all discussion boards are 20 points, and so on. Okay, so let's talk about your reading quizzes real quickly before we move on. Your reading quizzes here, they're all worth 25 points. Now, when you take these reading quizzes, they are averaged, which means that you can attempt them as many times as you want. But, the, but your grade is averaged, so don't just sit there and, and type in a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense when you're taking these quizzes. Because, one, it wastes my time and your time, and two, it's not going to help you give, get a preview of the questions you need to go study for. Because what it does is it ends up dropping your grade. Because if you get a zero the first time and you get a hundred the second time, your average grade is a 50. Now, you can play the numbers game and you can retake it as many times as you want and try and get it bumped up, but you'll never get to 100 if you don't start off that way. So just keep in mind, you know, so that you're well aware, that's how that works. Your tests for each unit, there's always a unit test. Your test for each unit will uh, have two attempts and the highest grade of the two will be kept. Okay, so that's pretty much how modules work. Um, if you have any questions or you haven't printed out the study guide, you can get it down here at the bottom in the, stu in the semester exams section. Here's that link to that study guide again. And finally, you'll see that there's a practice semester exam and a semester exam. The practice semester exam, I want you to notice, are zero points. That zero points means that it's extra credit. So when I grade, I'm going to grade your stuff, count up the number of things you get correct, and put that extra credit points into your thing, into your gradebook manually. You won't be seeing it, um, you won't be seeing a grade until I've gone through and graded it. And it'll be like 10 out of zero or eight out of zero, depending on how many you get correct on that answer. The answers will be shown to you immediately after, so you can kind of check your work, but the short answers may have to be graded by me first before you can get your final grade. Okay, so that brings me to grades. So we're gonna click on that grades link, and it's the last thing we need to do. And you can see that this is your, this is your grades list right here. And I will be making this a little bit of a neater list. You can see that it's kind of all jumbled up right now. But this will be a neater list when you take a look at it. But one thing that you do need to understand is this weighting here. So you can see that there's eight units in a semester. 
Each unit counts 10% of your semester grade. And then the final exam, which includes the practice exam, is extra credit, but the final exam counts as 20%. So it is very, very important that you study for that final exam as it is 20% or one letter grade of your entire semester grade. And that equals up to a total. So you can see, um, you can see any details that you need to do. If you, have, um, if you have any comments, they will show up here. Um, you'll be able to see any comments that I've made back to you. Uh, especially if I'm saying, hey, you need to resubmit this, or, uh, you know, great first start, but you need to add in here, or add in something there. So make sure that you're taking a look at this so that um, you can see your grades in real time. I grade every day, um, with the exception of, like, lab days. And that should be about it. So I'm looking forward to working with you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.